Uh, I thought my mic was muted. Welcome everyone to another exciting episode of the Magic Sandwich Show, which is uh, something I've not said, I don't think for, uh, I, I checked it out today, uh, two or three years. Um, and I thought it was only right for me to explain why we've not been here uh, for that amount of time. Um, and the explanation is not because I have become an atheist or anything like that. Uh, it is because um, during that time I've taken on a PhD um, and with the PhD I have also had to do teaching. And all my teaching uh, was scheduled for a Monday, which meant that the weekend um, meant that I was preparing for um, Monday's teaching, um, which made the Magic Summit show slightly difficult to do. Also, other things happened. The regulars on the show sort of kind of disappeared. Concordance had more family duties to do. Um, Thunderfoot and Aaron also set up uh, Patreon accounts. Uh, they were obviously um, more interested in doing their own videos for that. Um, so I apologize. Um, as you'll probably have noticed, the technology has changed. And the reason is that uh, a couple of months ago, two people approached me and asked me if they could take over the Magic Sandwich show. Uh, and I thought that that was a very good idea because I've got another nine months in which I've got to write up uh, and it takes up an enormous amount of time um, and so I was happy to hand over to Scrognaut and JD Kane who you may be familiar with. Um, JD Kane will be hosting the show um, for the foreseeable future. Um, I may be making the odd appearance. Uh, I'm going to be sticking around today for a short while to see how we get on. Uh, I think there's going to be a very interesting debate. Um, I will try my best to remain mute, um, but um, for all of those who have supported the show in the past. Uh, I thank you very much. And for those that will be supporting it in the future, I thank you also. Um, but um, please follow if you enjoy the show. Um, I don't know quite how everything is going to work um, because the technology that is being used um, to um broadcast this show is not what i used to do in the past i'm sure it's a great deal better uh, and it doesn't rely on my technical ability which um those of you who have watched the show in the past know is not that very good so with that um i hand over to uh jd kane uh, and I hope he will begin um, with explaining exactly how the technology works and where you can, you know, maybe make contact and uh, whatever. And then I think there's a, an interesting discussion uh, between two, um, I've got to be careful how I describe this, one Aaron and one Aaron. Uh, I think I've got that right. But... Over to you, JD Kane. Uh, thanks a lot, TPR. And uh, again, just for myself, thank you for all your prior contributions to the Magic Sandwich Show and for basically making it what it is today. And thank you again for trusting me to, to take it over and hopefully take it in a direction that will be interesting and will not put people to sleep. Let's let's all have fun talking about our beliefs. That's, that's kind of my goal here today. Uh, I assume things will get argumentative and a little combative, but... Uh, not to the point where everyone's going to you know, go away too upset. Let's just have fun, talk about our beliefs. Um, anyway, um, as he said, uh, my name is J.D. Kane, and I'll be the new host of the Magic Sandwich Show. 
Uh, I do also, yes, DPR, I do hope you show up from time to time because we always enjoy your input. Uh, so I'm trying to say what I describe what the show's going to be like. Well, you know, we'll just see where it goes from there. Uh, tonight we have, uh, what's it, Aaron Ra and Aaron White are going to be joining us. For, oh, did, did you get that backwards? Is that backwards? Is that, yeah, I'm messing with you. <laughs> Maybe a little uh, bit. Uh, I'm going to give both of them a chance to basically give them give them a, a brief little bio to say what we're talking about. Um, we, we, we technically have a main topic, but honestly, uh, I want them to feel free to uh, jump to different topics if, if you know something some, something one person says excites the other, they want to talk about that. Uh, we're, tr- we're going to try not to go too fast and exhaust topics as we go, but we'll see how things play out. This is a rel- relatively loose format at the moment until we get things more, more set in stone. So... Uh, who wants to go first? Raise your hand. No, no it's already been determined. Aaron. Oh, all right. Aaron, okay. uh, just tell me just a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, I'm a, uh, I'm a regional director for American Atheists, and I'm the author of Foundational Falsehoods of Creationism, uh, which is how most people know me because I, I realize that uh, creationism depends entirely on frauds, falsehoods, and fallacies, and so I decided to include those. And if you'll notice, I have a parrot behind me who is screeching and is probably going to ruin the whole damn show when I'm not muted. My apologies <laughs> for that. The only option is to d- take him out and risk getting finger bit. Uh, I'm also a director of the Phylogeny Explorer Project, which is a huge deal for me. Uh, this is something that I've been working on trying to get funding for and all of that for about a decade, and it's I'm I'm delighted that it's that it's finally a reality that is the uh, that's rendering the entire taxonomic tree of life as a navigable online encyclopedia of biodiversity. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of about seventy thousand taxa entered into the system so far, and we are going for a peer-reviewed status. So we're involving more scientists in that project. And one of the things that we recently discussed or recently discussed in one of the most uh, recent meetings was uh, that there's there's software now that can inc- that can bring in huge volumes of phylogenetic data, which is uh, data that where where all the construct of the location of the various organisms are done entirely by genome, and so that this can be entered into the system without a human interpretation, and largely this is without uh, without without any morphological considerations at all. Although those are important, the genome overrides, and so that's. That's what we're looking at possibly doing very soon. So we could have, while well, we're sitting at right under 70,000 taxa right now, we could be uh, twice that or three times that by, uh, you know, three months from now. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's, that sounds like some impressive work. Uh, as someone who was, who was a fan of uh, the, the foundational faults of, of creationism, I have to say, uh, when I first heard them, I thought it was uh, – you, you were a, like a professional scientist because it's just your voice. You, you don't have a typical normal guy voice. You have this, like, this deep thing, and it like so rehearsed. I was like, is this a pro thing? And I look like, oh, no, that's weird. So anyway, um, I love those. I still use them occasionally in conversation. Uh, anyway, Aaron, uh, welcome to the show, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Um. Well, for starters, I'm a very staunch um, Christian. Um, I have become a creationist after engaging with all the different views. Um, I've been involved in debates for many years, largely because I wanted to know what different people believed and why people believed it and so on. Um, After engaging all of it, I kind of made my mind up that creationism was the absolute best explanation for things. To make matters worse, I was a biology major in uh, college. Um, I went to what is really a secular university. A lot of ignorant people consider it to be a religious school because it's Wayland Baptist University and because of like their statement of faith and so on. Um, But attending there did, if anything, contradicted the things that I believe among other things. Um, So I I started studying biology because I find the material fascinating, love biology. I've been studying it even since graduating. I have been, you know, reading different sources, um, been doing Bible study for a long time, um, and it has driven me, you know, to understand not only, even before I became a biology major, I was a very staunch Christian, and then after I was that, I heard, you know, from all the, you know, be be it atheists, be it old, old earth creationists, all these different, you know, kind of subsets of belief about these things. And when I came across AIG, Answers in Genesis, I realized that, okay, well, let me tune into what they're saying, because I already know the Bible's true, there's no doubt. 
And as I tuned into more of that, I started to realize not only there is credence, there, there's reason to believe um, not only the Bible, but that also science confirms the Bible. Um, science shows that the Bible is authentic, the Bible is true, those kinds of things. And I listened to what they were saying with their research. I read, you know, on their topics, um, read their statement of faith, just got really, not really involved in AIG, but got really well acquainted with the material. Um, and um, kind of that's, I know that's why, of course, I've been invited to do this. Um, I am far, it's far from me knowing all the answers to things. There are more than likely going to be a lot of questions that I'm going to have to say I don't know on because I haven't been involved in this whole science argument debate thing for all that long. Um, but I've gotten to know enough where in, in different disputes and so on, um, I've been able to form a coherent, logical response um, that makes sense with in light of the evidence, both scientific and biblical. And um, that is where my descent to Aaron's position comes. All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, the, the main topic, which, which will likely branch off into several others over time, is, uh, in, in a general sense, is, is young earth creationism science? Is it scientific? And my own personal take on this is, is, is there a young earth creation model or even just the creation model that has utility? and whether utility matters. And so I think the first thing we start off is, what do we all mean when we say X something is a scientific theory? So well, we were actually having some things. discussions that, before we even started, we actually had some discussions in the, in the pre-show where we actually had some minor disagreements on this. So this should be interesting. Yeah, and okay. there is some explanation in here because especially when with the layman audience and, and scientists do use a different terminology, which tends to confuse some people. Yeah. So for example, uh, if we could, there is a rule in science that if you have an hypothesis or something more important than that, you cannot prove it to be true. You can only prove it to be false. You can disprove a hypothesis, but you can't prove it true. So what has been the practice for the last couple hundred years is that when you have a hypothesis that has been tested over and over and over again by every, every conceivable way, has passed every test, having never failed one, then it gets to the point where you take it a bit more seriously. So you could say, you could, in a colloquial sense, you could say that a scientific theory is a hypothesis that has been effectively proven because every modern scientific theory is also a fact. That's atomic theory, germ theory of disease, cell theory, theory of relativity, and so forth. So that's in one sense. But because, because science uses the language of mathematics, they don't use the word prove in the same sense that normal people would. So scientists don't declare anything to be proven to be true. Now, religion will very often take a completely opposite stance because they're all about make-believe. So they, they want to instill belief. So anything that they can find, they will declare that as a, as a point of belief. One of the rules that science has is that you cannot make a positive claim without evidence to back it up. There has to be something to indicate it. You can't even say that something is possible in science without a precedent or a parallel or a verified phenomenon indicating that such possibility exists. Whereas, of course, with religion, they can just assert whatever they want and just express because that's faith. And I think I'm just going to leave it there and see if there's any contest what I just said so far. Uh, Aaron, any disagreements with uh, what Aaron said about the scientific theories? Sure. Religion, I, for one thing, I would dispute that Christianity is just simply a religion. That's disputable. That's contestable. That's, that, that's challengeable on all levels. Um, and so, be, and so like, let, let, let's run with that for now, assuming Christianity is just a religion. And therefore, according to what Aaron says, it just asserts something true and science does not do that. Um, well, religion doesn't just assert things that are true. Religion it, in Christianity in this sense, because I know we're calling Christianity religion, um, it actually does make testable, predictable facts and so on. So it's not just like, oh, yeah, here's this. So believe it because we have no evidence for it and all that. No. That is not what this is at all. No. Can you then give me an example? Uh, well, one sec, Aaron, Aaron, if I may, uh, I wanted to give my own little input on, on scientific theories before we, we go a little further. Um, 
when it comes because we we mentioned you know evidence and facts, but I think it's important to kind of nail down what is meant by that because that can actually that all too can get a little fuzzy. Um, I have two quotes. One is from Christopher Hitchens uh, from his from his book God Is Not Great. And the other one is from Stephen Law's book uh, Believing Bullshit. Uh, the first one by Hitchens is a theory is something evolved, if you forgive the expression, to fit the known facts. It is a, it is a successful theory if it survives the introduction of hitherto unknown facts. And it becomes an accepted theory if it can make accurate predictions about things or events that have not yet been discovered or have not yet occurred. This can take time and is also subject to a version of Occam's procedure. Uh, now that is Chris Pritchens. This other one is from Stephen Law. He says, uh, this is more has to do with, you know, how we confirm that theory is a really good explanation versus one that simply explains the facts we already know about. If the prediction derived from a theory is of something that would not be particularly unexpected anyway, even on rival theories, then the fact that the prediction is true does not strongly confirm the theory. For strong confirmation, the prediction must be surprising in this sense, that if the theory were not true, then what is predicted would not be particularly expected. Putting these various points together, we can sum up by saying that in order for a theory to be strongly confirmed, that theory has to stick its neck out with respect to the evidence. It has to be bold to risk being proved wrong, if a, the if a theory either fails to make any predictions, or makes only vague and woolly predictions, or else predicts no things that are not particularly unexpected anyway, if, in short, it takes no significant risks with the evidence, then not only is it not strongly confirmed, it cannot be. Yeah, and then there's, of course, a lot more that we can get into with that. I mean, like every postulation in science has to be supported by empirical evidence. There has, and what that is, is a body of objectively verifiable facts, which are uh, that are that are concordant and indicative of only one available uh, postulation or position or hypothesis over any other. And every scientific theory not only has to be by evidence, but it also has to be testable. And there has to be a way to falsify it. So there has to if there has to be a way to to show substance if it is true. Though you can never declare it to be true, you can show that it is supported at least by these facts. And then beyond that, you have to have some way of proving it wrong. There has to be a way to falsify any scientific position. So you have to be able to speculate, well, this is the claim, then if this were the case in this experiment or this discovery or whatever would undo that, that would falsify the theory. How do we do that with Christianity? Well, basically for theory, we have to predict facts that have not yet been discovered. That's the big way to test theories. You have to predict some, hopefully something that would be surprising. Like we found it, if, if the theory were false, what we find would make no sense. Like, why the heck is that there? This predicts it. And that is what we call it would be a strong confirmation, confirmation of a theory. Yeah. So I am curious, does, uh, Aaron, does Christianity make such predictions? Not just explain the facts you already have, but is there a creation model you're aware of that predicts facts we have not yet discovered? Something really specific that wouldn't make sense unless creationism was true. Put it like this. I have been confronted with plenty of atheists that tell me something about, you know, the Bible, young earth creationism, whatever that come, that kind of stems from the Bible. It, the, you know, is not scientific in that it makes no predictions and so on. And many of them, for instance, like to cite the Ken Ham, uh, uh, Bill Nye debate. And they say, for, just for, for just, just for example, Bill Nye decimated Ken Ham during that debate. And what they clearly have not done is, is watch the entire debate because Dr. Ham presents literally the answers to their question, one of which is the Human Genome Project. The Bible asserts that, you know, all people, there aren't races of people. We all are literally just kind of one people. Um, there aren't that many, you know, differences between the people and, and so on. And literally the Human Genome Project confirmed that exact prediction. It also you know, there, there are plenty of other ones, but we can just take that one for now. Um, so the Bible very much makes predictions and shows us, you know, what we can take from, say, reading the Bible and saying, OK, if the Bible is going to say this, that means this prediction, this idea, this hypothesis must hold water. So let's go out and as as Aaron said, let's go out and try to falsify it. And. And, you know, bluntly, that's what the scientists with the Human Genome Project did. Now, I, I don't think any of them were assuming the Bible was true. They just kind of had a question they were running with. But what they ended up doing was confirming the Bible's account. Uh, if I could counter that, I mean, the director of the uh, of the Human Genome Project is himself an evangelical. And he uh, he holds that 
obviously evolution is a thing and that it was that Adam and Eve are not. He said that that is in direct contradiction to the facts. That's the director of the Human Genome Project, Francis Collins. He says there was never a time when you had a human population, you know, that is that is down to just a few people or two people certainly was impossible. That that never occurred. So there's one of the many ways that the Bible is directly contradicted by science. But one of the most important things, and then we can get into a bunch of specifics about why the Bible is wrong. I mean, you said something very interesting. You said that you knew that the Bible was true, which is curious because I know the Bible's false. And I can prove it where you can't prove your position, period. But then one of the, the, the worst things about it is the dishonesty of that position. Because whereas science is looking for how do we disprove this? Because they're just the only way you're going to have confidence in something is when you actively try to prove it wrong and you fail in doing so. And then you invite everybody else to try to prove it wrong and they fail in doing so. And this is where this is how evolution became the foundation of modern biology. But with creationist organizations, and you mentioned Answers in Genesis, they all have a statement of faith wherein they admit in one way or another, because they phrase it different ways, that they will not even consider any evidence that says that they're wrong. Matter of fact, the way the answers in Genesis says this is, by definition, no apparent, perceived, or claimed evidence in any field, including history and chronology, can be valid if it contradicts the scriptural record. So it goes exactly opposite of the way science works. They have the conclusion, and they'll do confirmation bias to, to claim anything that they want to support that, which is what you were just doing with the, the, the claim about uh, the Human Genome Project supporting the Bible. The Bible didn't actively say that God created a bunch of different people, although there are Christian denominations who do believe that. As a matter of fact, the KKK is exclusively creationist, and they believe that God created at least a half a dozen different races of people, kept them on different continents with the intent that they remain separate. That's an exclusively uh, that that's a exclusively Christian organization that believes that. But if we're talking about just any fossil, any fable about the first people, there is the implication that it would be the first of all people. So you have a scientific analysis of the first people and you have a fable about the first people. Okay, it's still the first people. It's still going to, to, to spread out from there. There's no confirmation of the Bible on that. I already did an eight part uh, series just proving Noah's flood. That's another thing that we know didn't happen. But more important. All right, well, actually, uh, uh, Aaron, we, we, we've gone through quite a few uh, uh, points already. Is there any uh, one, Aaron, you'd like to tackle so far before we get before we get too many all at once? Actually, I can tackle at least three things he said. The Bible didn't say certain things. KKK was only Christian. AIG statement of faith. AIG statement of faith probably needs to take precedence because it was mentioned first. For one, AIG statement of faith. Their statement of faith, yes, directly says any statement that contradicts the Bible cannot be true. Yes, agreed. Because number one, you have to have to have uh, you have to have a foundation for what you believe. And if the Bible is true, then the Bible should be where these things are based. Now, but as for not. and that ends that hold conversation. On, I didn't interrupt you. Hold on. No, let's be let, let let's have a mutual agreement here. I didn't interrupt you. You don't interrupt me. I'm okay. I'm typing things out over here to make notes for myself so I can remember what to respond to. Okay. With. AIG statement of faith saying nothing at all can contradict the Bible. Well, the reality is, okay, that's where they clearly, you know, base their thinking. Do they have good reason to base their thinking on that? Well, from all the research they've done, I don't really care whether you or I has read it or not. Um, the reality is, yes, just like with the Human Genome Project, it absolutely does confirm it. Because when the Bible says things like all, all people basically are related in some sense and there are no black, white, Asian, whatever people, those aren't races. Those are simply people groups and we are all just humans. None are, none are greater, none are lesser and so on. Um, you, call, you could call that a, a, a bias. I can call yours a bias because you do have a bias. Your bias is that you don't believe there is any evidence for God and so on. So you're going to, you know, look at all the evidence from that point of view. So in, if AIG has a bias that precludes him from doing any science, so do you. You have the exact same preclusion. Um, as for the KKK being only Christian, I know you would say it because, of course, they would, you know, cite various verses, you know, about, you know, but, you know, believing something that's found in the Bible. Well, plenty of people, by the way, including you, misquote it, misuse it, misrepresent it take it out of context, whatever the case may be. They did the same thing. In fact, nowadays we can look back and say, okay, it's, it's evident they 
violated the Bible or did whatever right here, because this is not what the historical context, among other things, you know, is indicative of. So was the KKK only Christian? No, they were not a Christian organization that I'm aware of at any time. They were just murderers. They were a terrorist organization. Um, as for the Bible, you know, didn't say certain things, maybe. Well, I've been presented with that a lot. The reality is the Bible also doesn't say Jesus pooped. I'm pretty confident it's a pretty rational conclusion to say that Jesus probably, you know, defecated a few times in his life. So the Bible not saying things. OK, science also doesn't say things nowadays. Does that mean they're not true? Not quite. We're still looking for other atoms that exist in the world. That's why we have plenty of, you know, testing centers to, to, to find out about quarks and atoms and so on. So just because the Bible doesn't say things doesn't mean anything. Same as just because science doesn't say anything right now also doesn't mean anything. I'm sorry, I'm just stuck on the idea of Jesus pooping. You put that thought in my head, I can't get it out. Right, well, first um, off, by, by a wealth yeah. of people because they insist that, for, that the Bible doesn't directly say certain things. Okay, the Bible doesn't tend to say a lot of things directly. Just because it doesn't directly say something doesn't mean that we can't understand that or know that based on what the Bible says over here. So all right, that well, argument is no water. All right, okay, well, then, uh, all right go ahead and respond. All right, fine. I don't have a bias. Uh, religion is a bias by definition. But that's why they rely on propaganda. But science dispels propaganda because it uh, it has to to eliminate bias by design, and uh, because it's an investigation and not a predetermined conclusion like religion is. Now you said that Christianity is not a religion, which of course it is. Now I understand that a religion is a, a faith based belief system that posits the idea that a a supernatural essence of self somehow survives the death of the physical body to continue on in some other form. There are many different religions that all claim this same thing. And then science, of course, has no statement on that. There are many Christians who are scientists. There are many Muslims who are scientists and accept evolution. There are evangelicals who promote evolution. In fact, some of the, the supporters and pioneers in evolutionary science are or were Christian. So that they're holding a religious belief that is separate from the science belief, and that Christianity is definitely really a religion, and it's not not a religion. I mean, if we were to ask what is the dominant religion on earth, that would be Christianity, right? I'm gonna I mean, guess. Agreed. What? Agreed. Okay, so Christianity is a religion. We can stop that now. So we still need to know, because I can give you a couple of examples, like with uh, with evolution, for example, Darwin made a couple of predictions. For one, he was the very first to point out that there was only one human race. Did you know that? Darwin was the first to say that. He challenged a number of scientists in his day that said that they were all coming up with different numbers for different reasons, and they were all completely arbitrary. He ordered that there's only one race of humans. Now, the fact that Ken Ham later says the same thing does not confirm the Bible. If the Bible and science both say the same thing, then confirming both doesn't, you can't say that it defends the Bible. No, it defends us, everything, what people say, not what the Bible say. And I've already there. pointed out, like I said, we know that the Bible is not true. We know that there was no global flood. We know that the Tower of Babel was a fable. We know Adam and Eve were fables. That the only value that story can have is as a parable. We know that it was the, the knowledge of tree of good and uh, the knowledge of or the tree the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not a wooden structure that you cut down and, and build a house out of. Neither was the fruit of the tree of eternal life. The parable, and that's all this could be, was that these people could either eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil or they could eat of the fruit of the tree of eternal life. And if they did, then they would live forever. And then they chose the other tree. Now, everywhere the Bible brings up, you know, the fruit of, it's always talking about the result of actions taken or decisions made. It's never literal except, except in Genesis. The one place it's interpreted erroneously, it's interpreted literally. And so when they made this choice, which tree are they going to eat from? They eat from the fruit of the tree of, of, of knowledge of good and evil. Then God has to squirrel them out of there really fast because, and it says this, because he wants to prevent them from then eating from the fruit of eternal life. Because if they did, then they would live forever. So all of that nonsense about you know Adam bringing death into the world, complete ho Complete hogwash. There was already death in the world. Adam already had to eat. All right, Aaron said that in the beginning before he ever got to the fruit. So what if Adam hadn't eaten from either tree? What if Adam hadn't eaten anything ever at all? 
All right, Aaron, uh, I'll give you all the time you need to respond, and then I'm going to bring up a quick point before getting back to Aaron. As for scientists, a lot of scientists accepting evolution, okay. The KKK used to say that black people, Jews, etc., are like half-breeds or bad or whatever. So the idea that a lot of people have a belief and – it sounds almost like you're saying that just because all these people have this belief in this thing, that makes it true. I hope I hope instead you're saying I wasn't that, implying anything like that, not remotely. So I'll just spare you the time of chasing down a straw man. OK, so then what you're saying then is they accept this because it's fact, not they accept this because it's an ad populum. No, they accept it because it's a demonstrable fact. It's an inescapable Thanks. fact of phylogeny and population genetics. It's something yeah. we can actually demonstrate and prove to be true that is actually real and we can prove it. If I may, Aaron, I wanted to bring it back to kind of the, the, the main topic, which was, you know, creationism and utility. Now, you mentioned different you, you did mention different interpretations that uh, we all have a, a bias and Aaron has a bias towards one interpretation. You have a bias towards another. Is that correct? Well, I don't have a bias. I got a correct. Well, I, I, I'm just, I'm just going what he said. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not agreeing or dis I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with what they religion said. Religion is a bias. And he's Aaron only to a religion. what he's getting at. He's not. Yeah. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I actually agree with Aaron that I think everybody has a bias. It's more a matter of degrees. But that, that's a whole other subject. We don't need to get into that. But you, you, that is what you said, Aaron. What? That, that, that everyone has a bias, that our bias goes one way and your yeah. bias goes another. Right? Well, Every this is... Speaking, yeah. Okay. Well, I, isn't there a way uh, out of this bias? And that is, again, to, to look at the utility of the model. Does the model explain the facts we have in a useful way? And more importantly, will it predict... Does it make strong predictions about future facts, things that we would expect to see uh, that, you know, if your model was false, it would be extremely surprising? And specifically, I mean, if, uh, it, has to be, it has to do with the field that we're discussing. Like, if we're discussing biology, then everything currently explained by, say, evolutionary theory would need to be explained by creationism. And also, creationism would have to start predicting future facts in biology. And to my knowledge, I'm not aware of any. I could be wrong, though. Um, if you know of some, uh, I, I would love to hear them. And the same thing goes for uh, the, the, the bits of cosmology and, you know, obviously, you know, the origin of life that creationism also attempts to answer, that there'd have to be some kind of utility. Like, you'd have to somehow explain, say, the, why the cosmic background radiation exists, why it has that temperature, why, you know, galaxies are moving away from us. And it'd have to do it in a way, uh, hopefully it predicts, it predicts some other fact that we haven't yet discovered. Would you agree to that, that that might help mm -hmm. reduce bias if we look for a, a model with the more, most utility? And then bias is really an issue. I mean, whatever works is whatever works, no matter where your biases lie. Yeah, it would have to. Because that, like Aaron said, that's the nature of science is make predictions that we can then show to be true or show to be false that are ultimately falsifiable that we can show, OK, you know, this is true because of this evidence or this atom over here shows this that this is not true or something like that. It, you know, the, the, the main component of science is falsifiability. And my point is yet meets that burden. Um, in all the well, yeah, I, I'm curious. Do you have um, an example, like a couple? I mean, I I, I know when it comes to evolution, of course, in cosmology, you, I come up with you know dozens of them, but it's not. This is mostly supposed to be about creation, so I wanted to start with that. Mm -hmm. is, is there any uh, prediction, let's say, um, about something in biology that creationism has predicted and has come true, or anything like that that you're aware of? Yeah, I just mentioned the human genome project. Uh, I, I hear a bunch of people asserting, from RN to you to others, that. Um, it makes it, it, it's not falsifiable. You haven't seen any predictions and so on wrong because I, I, I don't know if you watched the, the Bill Nye ham debate or not. I did because I was intrigued as to the dichotomy. Um, and everybody keeps saying, well, you know, that there was no evidence for the Yek position mentioned. There were no predictions to be able to later falsify. Yes, there were. In fact, Darwin actually dissented, dissented the idea that all races are equal. He dissented that. That was actually cited during the debate. That was cited, and that was it was shown. That's not what he thinks. That and there that's are not what he said either. Yes, he I know. I know which one and only line you could possibly be referring to. It's the one moment when Darwin quoted what was ubiquitous in cross science at that time, and it's in the Descent of Man. And as you continue reading, he then challenges that very idea and contradicts it directly with the line that I was just talking about. I did a long presentation on how the quote that you're citing right now has always been an erroneous attribution. So it's, so it's not actually Darwin, you believe it's, it's not a quote mine, but Darwin actually did not say it? No, Darwin said it, 
and he's, he said it in the in the vernacular of the science of his day and then went back and challenged it because what was that was happening at the time and this was ubiquitous even though every scientist at that time was a christian every one of them they were all arguing that there were different races of people and that they came from different origins and darwin was the first and at that time only scientists to say that that is not the case but what he what he said was it in the in the language that had been using at the time and this was what David and Voltaire and a number of other people they talked about higher and lower races mm -hmm. and they applied this even to people and they're talking about what you know and and of course even Carolus Linnaeus did you know that Carolus Linnaeus classified six different species of humanity depending on their color and their religious perspective so this was the language of the day. And Darwin is speaking to the scientists of his time and then goes after that where he talks about, you know, higher or lower races and what they were talking about. And then later goes into these these evaluations where he he changes his own mind, apparently, in the, in the course of the of the text. And then he completely comes out and challenges the idea that there's no different races at all. He even said in one of his earlier works, in fact, that uh, he always took the side of the of the 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 ethnicity, the dark skinned people in whatever countries he would happen to be on in his in his trip around the world. He called out the hypocrisy of the white raiders or invaders everywhere and, and pointed out the double standard and what what these uh, tribal people are doing to defend themselves and how we, we criticize them for that only because they're dark. Had it been a white woman, we would have given her complete credit and all of these things. He, he was very aware of racism. He was surprisingly yeah. almost alone in like being the only person of his. Yeah. Of if, I, if I may, Aaron, Aaron, were you aware of this objection to the quote? No. Okay. Yeah, he, he was he was like the least racist person of his century. Now, there's another question to say, is that claim true? I would like some evidence for that because we already have evidence that contradicts that. Well, I, I just said I did. I can give you links to two different presentations. I'll really? give you a, a link to a more succinct one where I go on for about 20 or 30 minutes, it just going into direct quotes from him and from Hitler, because there's also the lie that Hitler was a Darwinist is just like the lie that oh, Hitler We'll get into that another time. I don't think we have time to get into Hitler. <laughs> Remember, I told you, yeah. creationism depends entirely on frauds, falsehoods, and fallacies. There's not one word of truth to it, but damn, there's a bucket of lies in there. And you won't find lies on the evolution side because there's no need for that because it's a different perspective. You have one side that wants to make believe and they're going to do confirmation bias, and they're going to do question begging fallacy, and whatever. It all right, all right, all right. I don't, I don't want. We we, we can Go rant ahead. more. Let, let's save the rants more for like the end of the thing after we Science we've gone through some more subjects rather than right now. So we understand that the, the information has to be accurate. And so we want to test it because truth actually matters from yeah. a scientific okay. perspective. I, I, all right. Where that's um, irrelevant. Aaron, Aaron, I want, well, Aaron, you look like you want to respond. I'll let you do that oh, first. Then I want yeah, to go back to the, the original question. That, that truth matters. If truth matters, then why are you hinging things on things that ultimately you can't prove? Um, like for I can. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I don't interrupt you, remember? Well, what's I'll an example of something you don't believe Aaron can prove? Gotcha. Some things that I don't believe Aaron can prove are things like, and, and I know there's going to be dissent to this. I know, and you're welcome to it. Um, even with evolution. Okay. Tell me what, state what, what part, what, what about evolution you believe. Go ahead and lay it out. State what about evolution I yeah. believe. Okay, 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 we're going to be here three Please. hours. How was it thought about? Right. Talk about the entropy. Talk about all that stuff. Talk about it. Talk about the entropy? What the hell does entropy have to do with evolution? Yeah, I'm not. Are, are you bringing up the second law of thermodynamics and evolution, or, or that's you another topic? I want to hear about that one. The, the okay. creationist lie of the second law. What's that? What does oh, what? evolution say? Don't just, don't you mean, what? You, well, what? I think he. I think he wants to know what the core propositions of the yeah, theory. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have. I have again a video uh, series which is very simplified. It's to. It's to bring it down just to the most simplistic level to to uh, introduce it to non scientific novices. And we're uh, working on the 43rd episode right now. So you want me to summarize all that to tell you? No, I don't want you to summarize. I can, I can tell you what creationists lie about what evolution says. No, I want you to state what evolution is. I want you to. Well, I'll tell you that it, it, I can tell you what it's not to tell you what it is. It is not and never was. Well, state, what, 
state what evolution is. This way we can That's bottom it right yeah. now. Like, all right, all right I, I actually I do have to agree with Aaron here. It would be yeah. easier to simply go through what the core propositions I, are, yeah, what, what scientists are putting forth rather than what creation say. There's an awful lot that we know to be true about evolution. So, well, one, give us like the high school version, not so much right. what you're going to learn what in college. I'm trying yeah. to do. I'm trying to give him what I suspect is probably going to be one of his primary misconceptions. Because what would it what good would it do to tell him that uh, that that you know that people came from apes? Right? He already probably knows that. So let me give him something he probably doesn't know. Evolution is not and never was one kind giving birth to another fundamentally different kind. And now that is what doctor, an honorary degree, that's what Dr. Ken Ham says, but it is a lie. It's a lie that really annoys me because it's a, it's a gross misrepresentation that defies the actual laws of evolution, the laws of biodiversity and monophyly specifically. It is a deliberate distortion by people. That's, that's, that's not accidental ignorance. That's people misrepresenting it on purpose. They know. That, it, that evolution is descent with inherent modification, so that every new thing that ever evolved is just a modified version of whatever its ancestors were. But whenever you show them a new species evolve, they'll say yeah, a new species of fly or a finch or whatever. They'll say, but it's still a fly or it's still a finch. Of course it is. Okay, because please move on from that point. Where does it always be? What? Please move on from that point because that's not what we're talking about. Like I said, please state the core, the tenets of, bi of biological evolution. Proceed because you're wasting time with this. Yeah, I, I believe he means like the, the broad points, like natural selection, gene mutations, that you know, okay, horizontal I, gene I transfer, those kind of things. I think he's, that's what he he's means. Wanting me to hurry up on the simple stuff, and he's asking for the more complicated stuff. That can't be the case. Actually, I think he oh, wants yeah, the simple yeah, stuff at the moment. I I forget that. I forget that. You forget what? That we have a layman audience. If okay. we have a layman audience, we can't just delve into you know, specific deep things about bio, we have to very much build groundwork first to then be able to build up from that. Okay. We I'm know that every organization, before. every organism produces more of, uh, more offspring than it is originally in itself. So there, there's a proliferation there. And then in every one of them, there's gonna be some variants. And these are, the, the variation is determined mostly by mutation. And then some of these mutations, regardless whether natural selection applies to them or not, uh, even if we were only talking about neutral mutations, we're still going to have a larger variety here. And this is where genetic drift means that the more that these replicate, even without extinction you know, events or any of that, we're going to have a wider and wider range as some genes proliferate in the in the society. Divided populations, for example, will expand more. So we get continually different. And every subset never becomes the new kind because there's no such thing as a kind. It, it's always a modified version of whatever its ancestors were. And then eventually you have deleterious mutations, which are eliminated from the gene pool pretty quickly, and beneficial mutations, which tend to enjoy a, uh, a selective advantage. But for the most part, these mutations are so subtle that they have no immediate effect and can proliferate through generations most of the time. Now, is there anything else that, that you need me to say? Because, I mean, really, I could explain to you what I know about evolution. Okay, for, easy. Forever. What? Big Bang, hold on. Big Bang occurs. Eventually, that we have to do with evolution. No, not the point. Not the point. Okay. I'm 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 condensing this a lot because we're we're not interested in talking about the whole of you know atheistic materialism. We're not interested in talking about that. Ne neither am I. I was only talking about evolution, which, as I said, is supported right. by Christians who also understand science. Which has nothing. So at no point. At no point was I talking about atheist materialism. I'm I actually would, curious where you're going with the the Big Bang cosmology there. So go go I'm ahead, Aaron. I'm trying to give the range of everyone to include all of them. I don't care where you stand. I don't care where I stand. I was trying to give the range of them. Thank you. The range of what? The range of beliefs. Now, to move on on yeah. some important material. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So after the Big Bang occurs, we get the planet, all that stuff. Then. We're talking about evolution, right? Aaron, I let you speak. I have let you speak. Have I not? Well, actually, Aaron, he, he does have a point. Since we were talking about evolution, that you, that you suddenly went to cosmology. I'm aware, of that. I'm aware of that. My point is, if I'm going to let him speak, he's to offer the same respect to me. Okay, well, you know what? We only have about a minute or so for questions. So, Aaron, you basically have the floor for the rest of the time until we have questions. Go ahead. Okay. Um, part of the idea, and, and this, I was trying to insist on Aaron getting to this because there's material there that I want him to describe because usually if I say something suddenly then it becomes you know no that's not what we say but then in the description it's that no that is what I said and 
it's this whole dichotomy. So instead, let me just go beeline for it. Um, the idea is that eventually, you know, the world formed, you know, we get all these things coming together, you know, over all these millions and billions of years. And eventually it forms, you know, DNA and proteins and it comes together to form a cell, you know, all that jazz. For one thing, we know from science, we know specifically from biology, actually, that life does not come from non-life. So that's a contradiction right there, first and foremost. Except that that's, that's Hold on. Do we Hold on, we're, we're going to let him go ahead and have the floor, and we, we can always tackle right. these claims Thank later. You. Thank you. Um, life does not come from come from non-life. Wrong. Um, You're right. That is wrong. You are wrong there. All right, all right, all right. Please, Thank please you let for interrupting me again. Yeah, please, please let Aaron finish because we're running low on time. We're going to yeah. go ahead and let him. Uh, you may not have a chance to to deal with all of these claims, but we're going to go ahead and let him have the floor because you have at we, we had a bit more talking time. Agreed, and I, I I think he's probably talked about two thirds of the time instead of. Even All right, don't get me nasty about it. Though. No, I I can and I should because that's exactly what he's done. That's what he does in all of his videos on YouTube as well. All right, and well, he, hey, you, this is your turn to use up, man. I, 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 I get the chance to call him out. Um, for one if thing, no. For one thing, life doesn't come from non-life. Um, and then with respect to all the things you're talking about. You know, yes, actually, the the science that we know that all these things that we know ultimately in the ultimate sense, it all con like all the things you were talking about fall under what we call, of course, observational science falls under the things that we can observe, things we know, things we can test, all of those things that all yeah, falls under those, prove those categories that we can like that we already know to be true. And there is no dispute between us on that because that's just basic biology. That's just basic biology. So you accept uh, evolution then? Biological evolution, from your definition, yes. What What is my definition? How is my definition? You just described exactly what it is we believe. It's bio 101. Everyone believes that. Everybody. Everybody no, I, got, I, I hear all the time from people who identify as creationists because creationism is an objection to evolution specifically. It really is. Well, if I may ask a quick question, it might, might clear this up. Aaron, um, do you agree with basically, uh, let's say, do you agree with um, evolution as in allele frequencies change within biological populations. Oh, you agree yeah. with microevolution, macroevolution, but not a change in kinds. Would yes. that be a good explanation? Okay, so then you're not a creationist. That is creationism. No, it isn't. Okay. Well, yeah, I was. Oh, I'm sorry. Let, 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 hold, 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 hold. Well, let me add. You do disagree with common ancestry going back millions of years, right, Aaron? You, 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 you agree. You believe common ancestry stopped at Noah's flood, right? No. So, no? Okay. Um, you know, I, I assumed you believe that after Noah's flood, um, whatever species there eventually speciated to what we have today. Well, yeah. But yeah, that's what I was saying. But you don't think common ancestry goes back millions of years. That's your issue. When you said common ancestry, that's not the same thing. Again, the semantics is the big thing here. But, um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Speciation, adaptation, natural selection, all that stuff, yeah. Yeah, in my own discussions, I, t I tend to try and explain this to creation creationists. Uh, luckily, it seems like you, you've got it thanks to your going to, yeah, going to so school for this. But a lot of creationists yeah. will cool claim that they disagree with macroevolution, but then they redefine it as being kind, right. kinds, which is yeah. which is not right. the definition. I'm glad well, you actually know that. That's what defines creationism. That's what defines creationism is whether you object to evolution. So if Aaron accepts evolution, then technically he's not a creationist. He would be well, a uh, by, by definition of the person who has repeatedly misquoted our position repeatedly. Well, Aaron, what, what do you mean when you say has, you're a creationist? What, what is the belief that you say has to be? Your position. Yeah, one sec. Uh, Aaron, what, what is, when you say I'm a creationist, what do you mean? For one thing, I don't believe the earth is millions or billions of years old. In fact, I believe strongly that the and evidence. You just contradicted yourself. I believe strongly. Well, let, 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 him, let him finish. Let him finish. That the evidence contradicts that. Um, scientific, literary, hit, historical, archaeological, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Second of all, I believe that we do not share a common ancestry with apes. I do not believe there was any ape-like creature. I believe there is plenty of evidence in the genome. I haven't really looked into that so specifically. Okay. I'm still coming up on that. I'm very interested in that one. That's why I keep reading, you know, sci like the the papers and 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 so on from just all these other scientists. Because I'm very intrigued by that as a biologist. Um, and I believe that God's word is absolutely authoritative, authentic, true, and totally falsifiable, not to mention proven time and again. Okay, Aaron, you would agree with what he just said there. That does make him a creationist. Uh, no, right? not a word of it. Um, so for one thing, <laughs> well, no, not that you agree with what he said, but that you agree that makes him a creationist. I, I just got to say, I mean, 
God's word, who can say what God's word is? We don't have yeah. God's word. We have the word of ignorant, bigoted, superstitious savages who obviously didn't know what they were talking about. And that's why they thought that the world was flat and that there was a firmament over it. And that's why that they thought that that the movement of air was spiritual. That's why that they, they never mind. I'm not even going to get into all that. Hey, all right, let me ask a question. Let me what? ask a, a, qu a follow up question. Why are you mad? Why am I mad? Okay, that is not really on top. I, 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 okay. I, Aaron, I know you have a good answer to this, but let's face it. Hold on a sec. One sec, Aaron. One sec. I, no, I kind um, of assumed we were done with that whole thing because you did say we only had like a minute left. So I thought, okay, let's get into some more. Well, we had a minute left like five minutes ago. But uh, uh, as you probably noticed, uh, Fiona has something from the outside chat. And this actually I, – I, I wanted to get to this. We seem to uh, – the topics tend to shift as, as they do I in like conversation. Um, well, Aaron, well, you like the question. Aaron, why don't you take the first shot? How did creationism – predict the human genome project easy because if all people are descendants of one couple adam and eve then there can't be different races it is the exact thing the exact you know um content of of what the human genome project uh, projected there are no black people asian people whatever we are all one people we are all the human race there are no such thing as black people, white people, whatever. That's just a difference of melon. That's just a different gene coded, a, dif a different gene transcribed. That's all that is. And the Bible now, the, of course, the Bible didn't, you know, predict the, you know, the, the DNA and okay, this is the, you know, A T G C, you know, this is the sequence for that. But it certainly predicted the actual result. Okay, well, before, before, what, Aaron, hold it, before, before our response, um, what creationists predicted this? I assume there's literature before the Human Genome Project finished that says, when they're done, this is what we're going to find. Is is there that? I mean, obviously, the prediction has to be made before we find the stuff, right? Um, do you, Are you aware of any publication by a creationist like AIG or, Answers in Gen or Institute for Creation Research, maybe the Creation Ministries International, even Evolution News or Discovery Institute? Do any of them have a paper published before the Human Genome Project finished that said, we are definitely going to find out genetically that they're, you know, we're all one race, so to speak? I can't. I can't think of it right now, but that's because I wasn't looking for it. Um, okay. The idea is right, well, that that would be uh, if you could find it, that'd be great because that'd be if that actually yeah. that might that might possibly count as a prediction. So if you can I find can, that, that'd be, that'd be great. If I find it. How about that? Yeah. And then, anyway, Aaron, right, go ahead and respond. There's the story about when Cain killed Abel, you know, and then uh, there's so many things wrong with that. One, Cain had to lie about it because he already knew that killing people was bad even before the Ten Commandments. So there, there, that's another hole in the theology. But then he's banished and he has to go find a wife in the land of Nod, which implies that there were other people besides him and his bro, you know? So it, because it's all just fairy tales, there is no truth to any of these fables in the, in the Bible. None at all. And when somebody mentioned before about having a bias and that you know, everybody has a bias. And we, I mentioned that the Phylogeny Explorer Project is using computerized software to drag in genomes that are automatically being assigned by computers, the same way they did computer evolution models, where you remove bias entirely from the equation and the computer will still produce an evolutionary model. Now, you don't believe that there are, that, 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 that we are apes, right? Even though the genome actually proves that. And that's why they had to reconstruct phylogeny. So they had to reconstruct what, what had happened was careless Linnaeus some, you know, in 1735 or where he said that he couldn't tell the difference between humans and apes in a physical comparison. He said, we are the same thing. And in fact, he, he classified us together. He classified chimpanzees and orangutans as human species. And the scientific community of his day went ape shit, literally. And they, they created this, uh, this arbitrary second classification called Pongo that would include all the apes except for us, which is a Freudian slip because they don't want to admit that we are part of them. Now, the genome, about 30 years ago, they come back and they realize that the, that the genetic, genetic comparison now is not just a linear comparison, but it's, it's hundreds of codons indicating diagnostic condition that we are apes. We are a subset of apes in the same way that lions are a subset of cats and iguanas are a subset of lizards. So you don't believe that we're apes, even though the science says that we are. And you don't believe that any of these fossil species exist. I mean, I'm taking classes in paleontology. I've been on digs. I can tell you these species exist. I'm going to a fossil dig in, in, uh, in South Africa in February. And yeah, these, these things actually do exist. There, there's not somebody like planting them. It's not like a worldwide conspiracy where they make this stuff up. You just have no idea because you have a belief system in what I'm sorry to tell you is literally a fable. That's it. That's all. It's not the word of God. It's not the intercontrovertible truth. But it's even right lies. there, you repeatedly misrepresented our positions repeatedly. So how can no, you no, say that, once. Actually that, once. that our position is just a repeat of fables when you can't yeah. even correctly, accurately say, accurately state 
what it is we believe because you've done it in almost every video I've seen of you, every single one of them. So what have I misrepresented? you can say that. What have I gotten wrong? Um, crap. Because I remember when, when um, oh, uh, Kenneth Miller. Kind of think back. Kenneth, Will, Kenneth Miller, the star witness for Kitzmiller versus Dover, he announced that he is a Catholic. I, mean, I had a chance to meet him, but he was in church giving a sermon, and I'm not, I wasn't going to put up with that. So he's a, he's a <laughs> traditional Catholic. He has traditional Christian beliefs. And he said, in the broadest sense, that he would be a creationist only because he believed that God creates. But he knows that the definition of a creationist is somebody who objects to evolution specifically. Now, you flip-flopped on this, but it turns out oh, that you actually do object to evolution because, of course, that does include common ancestry. It includes phylogeny, the very thing that I do. So I have this uh, video that called the Phylogeny Challenge, which if you think there's any truth at all to creationism or that, or that there's any kind of fundamental flaw to evolution, then you would have to look at that video and try to answer that challenge. It's something that, honestly, if there was any I'm truth to it at all, you would be able to, and you can't. No one can because there is no truth to your position at all. Okay. Now, one thing you said, for instance, is that, you know, where do the people in Nod come from? Actually, that's already answered in the Bible. The people in Nod came from, you know, a group of siblings that actually went off to that people. So, yes, there were people already there. These things are already repeatedly answered. You've just They're ignored the answer. Oh, Aaron, Aaron, I'm going to let him have last word, then we're going to go to the next question, okay? Go ahead, Aaron. No, it's just that these answers are already there. And, oh, but one thing is the bias thing. You've already demonstrated it. You say something about, you know, science just, you know, it's built on predictions and then testing those predictions to falsify them. Well, you've already started from the position of, okay, the Bible is repeatedly not true. And of course you say that it's because it's been repeatedly disproven, repeatedly not just falsified, but disproven. But on the other hand, none of the things you've cited have actually disproven the Bible. You said something about, you know, we've seen through the human genome project that, you know, apes and humans are, you know, basically the, the you know, the, the same, you know, descendant and all this stuff. I don't really care how careless Linnaeus you know, classified us in in in, in the thing because there are a lot of issues with that, as you should already know. Um, but the idea is these things are already repeatedly answered. There's already that there's been scientific testing going on on this. And of course, the creationists from Darwin's day, yes, made some. You know, I, I can't remember what they were, but they 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 said some false things. Um, as did, of course, Darwin with all of his hypotheses. I did like what you said earlier about that we cannot know everything, at least genetically, with an organism by the phenotype. Because, and of course, you're right because there can be multiple phenotypes from similar, from similar, if not even kind of the same. Um, what is it? Um, gene. Um, so therefore, we can only look really at the genotype to know these things. I did like that, but like I said, you repeatedly. All right, fifteen seconds, Aaron. Aaron, sorry. Move on to the next question. I'll let you finish up. Didn't you ask for Aaron? No, he's sorry. Said Aaron. I, I, yeah, I said both. Honestly, I, I said, but Aaron, uh, go ahead. Fifteen seconds more, and then we're going to go to the next question. Okay. Okay. Just that you repeatedly misrepresent our position because I haven't heard from creationists to say that. Of course, there could be ignorant creationists that assert things. I wouldn't really put much stock in what they say. But on the other hand, there are atheists that make the um, similar assertions, similar naive assertions, and we can talk about that later. What did I all misrepresent? Right, right. Well, all right. Well, we'll, we'll I'll tell you what. After, after we Look, go through this question, we can go back to anything. Okay. I haven't heard you say what I misrepresented. I understand that you have an interpretation. Uh, Arn, Arn, Arn. I know you want to. I know you want to. Uh, hold on, Arn. I know you, you want to hit him back. But an answer, but it's not we, an answer. It doesn't. Arn, Arn, Arn. Uh, you feel that there's some accuracy to it. Arn, you're on record. You disagree with a lot of what he said. We we get that. <laughs> uh, I do. I do. <laughs> you probably disagree with everything he said. So that's kind of on record. I'm sure the outside chat's probably going through a lot of these things with their own opinions, and a lot right. of them will agree with you. All right. So the question um, from the other J. I think he probably meant Aaron, but we'll we'll go with what he put just in case. Why does Arn think organisms? you know, in parentheses, life can't be made by non-organisms. I believe that was Aaron's thing, but Aaron, that wasn't you, right? That question? That's, that's Aaron, not me. That's Aaron. So, Aaron, why, why do you think um, organisms' life can't be made by non-organisms or non-life? I said life doesn't come from non-life. I say I repeated right. what you one teaches like, so, Yeah, that's what you say. Why do you believe that? Because it's evidenced. We don't see any rocks bringing forth plants. We don't see, you know, um, air molecules bearing, you know, amoebas. There is right, no... Right, well, I'm sorry. Isn't that spontaneous generation, not, you know, abiogenesis? 
I mean, yeah, but that's still life from non-life. Life from non-life is represented in abiogenesis, spontaneous regeneration, a lot of these different things, and that's the but point. But you don't know what abiogenesis is. Okay. You, you yeah, just you, gave the most dis okay. most disturbingly inaccurate portrayal of spontaneous generation I've I ever heard. My case. I did say that when creationists say things, suddenly, according to the atheist, no, we can never do any right, nothing we ever say is correct, but when the they- The reason say that things, you say that mm -hmm. life can't come yeah. from non-life was because of Rudy Virchow. That. I did say that. Yeah. Ru Rudolf Virchow was the one who said that life cannot come from life, and he also said that cells come from other cells. And then he realized he had had to recant on this. And he's actually the one who came up with the theory or the, the hypothesis of abiogenesis was the very guy who came up with the rule that you're citing now when it says life comes from, from life and that it only comes from life. He had to realize that diseased cells were not always diseased cells. There had to be a first cell that wasn't diseased and then it had to spread on that way. And so that caused him to reevaluate what he had previously said that you just repeated about life not coming from, that life only comes from life. Yeah, if I may, Aaron, do you believe biological life is eternal? No. In so no there was a time on this planet, in your perspective, when there was no life? I'm trying to think back to the, J to the days in Genesis. No. There was never a time. No. When there was no life on this planet. So, so God didn't create life. It was, life is eternal. You're assuming God's life. You're assuming the eternal life in heaven is biological life. Do I need to assume anything? Well, if, do you if, need to assume If life anything? always existed, that's what eternal means, right? You assume my position repeatedly, and I just told you you're wrong. Okay, tell me how I'm wrong. Do what? Tell me how I'm wrong. Okay, did you just ask tell you how you're wrong? Right, because you haven't done that. You just I'm said I'm wrong. Well, one second, one second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, 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 hold on, one sec, Arn. You um, made two Aaron, statements. Arn, 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 one sec, one sec, one sec. And yet life was never created. Oh, right. But life uh, was always here. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going I'm to well, I'm gonna be charitable and say, uh, Aaron, can you clarify what you meant? Clarify what? That life doesn't come from <laughs> Well, uh, you said that you know life only comes what? Here's from the life. I assume you said life only comes from life and that non-life cannot create life. But you also believe that biological life is not eternal, right? So, well, I I do agree with Arn. I think there is a contradiction there, unless you have some kind of fix for it. Explain the contradiction. Well, uh, you do believe biological oh, life exists. That there was a first biological thing that then reproduced and made other things. So, where did that come from? Well, it obviously came from something that isn't biological life, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you're you're well, the question. My 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 question was very simple. Was there a time on this planet? When there was no life, you no. Said no, no. Okay, no. so life is eternal. No, or is the planet okay. eternal? No. Okay, okay so, well, yeah, so, I'm not sure. So how that in, works. It, with the planet okay, was well, then, with Arne, life on it. Hold on, and let me explain before you continue to talk and just assert that my position is contradictory. Right, well, go, go ahead. Why like you get so mad at, at others, and it's like because you don't let others speak because you want to just talk the whole time, but you never want to listen. You never want to listen. Oh, yeah, now you're willing to listen. Yeah, now. It's very simple. God says he created life. God is not necessarily biological. Of course, Jesus was on this earth, yes, but he's not so much biological life necessarily because, of course, I, there there is no blood in that man's body. After crucifixion like that, there's no blood in his body. Um, so God was the one that created it. Biological life is not eternal. Biological There, what, there was biological life you know, that, that started, that is not a biogenesis because God was the one that created it. God was the one that initiated it. So no, there's not a contradiction, even despite your claims incessantly. So what day did God create life? I believe it had to have been on day three because at the same time ah. he created the earth and all that was okay. in it, um, <laughs> there was, there were planets. Okay. All right, well, so, you guys ready life, for the next question? It wasn't always there. Life, there was a time when there was no life, and then there was a time when there was life. And you said life doesn't come from nothing, but God creates ex nihilo. That's from nothing. Is so you God believe nothing. that life came from nothing. The difference in our perspective. Thank you. Thank you. In our perspective. Now we're yes. proving my point. Thank you. The difference in my perspective, in our perspectives, is there was a time when there was no life. Then there was a time that was life, and you think it happened magically. I think it happened naturally. That's the difference. Define magic. 
uh, the supernatural or the evocation of supernatural forces or entities to control or forecast natural events in ways which are inexplicable by science because they defy the laws of physics. JD, we can't hear you. Yeah, I do love love talking when I'm when I'm muted because it's just so much fun to see my mouth move without any <laughs> words coming out. I love doing that. I do it way more often than you think. Um, let, let's let's go ahead and be charitable and just use miracles instead of magic. I know Aaron's argument yeah, about it, that it's miracles are thing. magic. If, if you I, I know you're arguing about that, but but just in, in, the, in the nature of miraculous, it's magical. They're the same thing. I, I, in spinning. the interest of charity, I'm just going to go with miracle. Miracle, right? That that's fine. You think it happened for Aaron? Yeah, miracle. miraculously. Okay. All right. Well, let's. Uh, we have another question from John Peterson. You guys are fine to move on. All right. Uh, this is for Aaron. So, Aaron, you don't. No one likes you. No one's giving you any questions at all. You must be so bored. Like no one wants to know what I think. All right. So you said that Aaron hinges his claims on things he cannot prove. Uh, please give us an example of something Aaron claims but cannot prove. And Aaron, I want you to give him a lot of latitude on this. Let him. Let Aaron uh, give everything he wants to, and then go at the end, drink. yeah, go. <laughs> Well, you should hear some of this, right? Oh, easy, easy. That I claim thing. I claim that. Let's just say, you know, God creates things ex nihilo. That I claim that you know, life does come from non-life. Then say that life doesn't come from non-life. Um, then he repeatedly goes back and proves my point. So he hinges his beliefs on things that he cannot prove. He repeatedly proved my point when he spoke just then. I love that. Um, then when I even spoke up dissenting his words and then requoting myself to prove that what he was saying was wrong, um, he then tried to talk over me and stuff. That's his exact tactic. And I love that I get the chance to call him out. All right. Um, I think the thing when it comes to, to the origin of life is I think we're both on the same page with that. There was a point where there was no life. And then there was a point where there was life and whatever made it was not something we'd call biological life. It's more about with well, a mechanism, you know, God with a miracle yep. or chemical processes on the early. If we could throw a question back to the audience, I'm curious when it was that he proved something I said was wrong. I honestly don't Already think that happened. happened. We're not going I, back to that. Mm -mm. Yeah, that, that yeah, didn't happen. There was not a time in this conversation where you proved okay. that I said something that was wrong. I have proved a couple things that you believe are wrong. And I did do that. But okay, yeah. well, that's that's good. That's We, we can leave that there. We can leave that right. there. Um, we have another question from the other Jay. This is a really good one. I like this one. By the way, um, my computer's also at 8%, so it may just we, We'll go till it explodes and just <laughs> see right. battery acid right. fly in your face. All right, so... I, um, like to, I got a good direct question because I, I know you've said things. You don't believe that, that these, these fossil species exist. I mean, do I need to take you to a museum? Hold on, he's not... A, I can see from his face he doesn't agree with that. Me. What? Uh, Aaron does does anything agree with along those lines. Again, you're misquoting me. You can't seem to get much of anything I, right. I, I just I wish we could run the tape back to when you said. Yeah, I wish we could too. Uh, what was the exact words that you said that there were there were no what, what did you call them ape men? What what did you yeah, call them? Yeah, teachers. Yeah, what exactly are you saying do not exist? Because I don't want you to pretend that I misquoted you again when I didn't before, and I'm not going to now either. So what was it you actually said? That I'll be sure to write it down this time. What is it? All right, <laughs> all right, all right. Hold on. All right, you know what? I, I think I think it looks like you know, both of you are on different pages yet trying to make points. As so it's oh, no, no, no. past each other. I understand right, what he's saying now, and I even believe I, I know where he's going. But the idea is again, he's trying to talk over me, put words in my mouth, and so on things that I never said. And he and he, all he does is, is prove my point. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we, well, hold on. All right, all right. My point that I did not do that because I asked him to say again what words he would use. So he has no idea where I'm going. Believe me on that. I'm asking him to put his own words in my ear so that I can write them down. So that all right, I let me not. let me let me call where I call him a moment. One moment. Yeah, all right, yeah, guys, guys. guys. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold it, hold it. Hold it. All right, do, hold on. All right, do you guys, Aaron? One sec. Do you want to continue down this particular path, or do you want to move on to the question? Leave it to Aaron. I'm good. Whatever. Aaron, do you want to keep going with what Aaron's talking about, or you want to go to the question? What? I thought they were one and the same. I thought we were. I thought. Oh, no, we haven't actually gone to the question yet. Uh, all right, okay, let me just yeah, go well, ahead and go on to the question because the, the argument yeah, of thing, even I'm the losing point. what the points you guys are trying to make is at the moment. Three. All right, so um, the question is, and this is from the other Jay again, um, how can the creationist predictions of ancestry be correct if our most recent common uh, patrilineal ancestor lived tens of thousands of years earlier than permitted by, uh, I believe he means young earth creationism? Uh, it's again, aren't no one likes you. They're not going to ask you any questions. The jerks. 
Go ahead, Aaron. Oh, Aaron, never mind. I thought I heard Aaron. No, that's um, definitely for you. It's easy. That is assumed to be the case. Um, the idea is this is the this is the difference between historical and observational science. All the all the 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 you know um adaptation the just bio stuff that Arn was talking about is all observational you know biology it's all the stuff we can see evident in nature um that right there is called historical science it's called historical uh, it's called historical biology those are things that are assumed to be the case we can't go back and look at fossils from you know 200,000 years ago to say okay this is the case there is an assumption there there are quite a few assumptions actually same as what Arn does um that I don't and that's okay. not the case. There is no distinction between observational science and historical science unless you want to talk to Mr. Ham, who got an honorary degree in something he clearly does not understand. So they are doing hey, observations. Can I comment to can I go ahead and comment to Barney's comment? Uh, one second. Well, Aaron's going to go ahead and finish for a second. Then, yeah, we'll no, move I'm on done. to Barney's. You done? I'm okay. done. Yeah, I, I, these I, are I, observations. I can prove the very things he says doesn't exist. I can prove they exist. Okay. That's okay, easy. Uh, he wants to. He wants to believe in something he he knows he can't prove exists. But I. But he wants to say the things don't exist that I can prove exist. So we're on completely different footing here. Uh, for charity's sake, I do believe that uh, wh whether I agree with Aaron or not, I, I think he believes he can prove these things. Uh, obviously, you got, obviously you disagree, but I'm sure he's not here in bad faith. Um, anyway, uh, I, I don't I do, have to think he is. I think he. I think his situation is like. You know how heroin addicts have a certain behavior and meth addicts have a certain indicative behavior, and you. Can All right, and, oh, and I, I don't want to get into mind reading right now. No, that, really that's know. that's. Well, I mean, let, let him go ahead because nothing he said, uh, very little that he said up to this point has been true. When he's delved into really you know, anything I said, been false. Been he's been correct. Aside All right, from Aaron, uh, he says you have the floor. Go ahead. No, no, is anything uh, that I said false? I've repeatedly corrected you, so go ahead and you, you talk repeatedly about asserted a couple of things, but never never showed that anything I said was actually false. Okay, so then I guess he's not going to. So JD, proceed. All right. I do have one 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 question. Do you believe the the observational science versus historical science is is used by scientists that are employed by colleges and research institutes? No. Or is that well, no? excuse me. As they, far as you're don't, aware. They, they don't directly say it, but yes, they apply it. I know because we did in research. We did in research. Uh, interesting. I like to hear more about it later. Uh, that sounds interesting. All yeah. right. So the next Actually, question, we by, so we can uh, yeah. talk about it. Yeah, we talked about your, your biology class for. I, I believe you mentioned you, you were kind of frustrated early on with uh, your your professor. Like you weren't, you didn't feel like you were getting the information you were, you were hoping for. Oh yeah, but plenty frustrated with him. Yeah, yeah. That's why I didn't really want to come back to this damn school. But that's actually where I'm seated right now. <laughs> at that hey, day, hey, school. I come back here and I am salty as hell right in front of the administration, in front of like campus security, all that stuff. Because I, I no, I like. You're probably getting a lot of looks in the hallway. Anyway, you said oh, you're yeah. at like eight percent, probably lower now. So let's see if we Five. get towards the end. So. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're running out of time. So to Aaron, does creationism accept that we're apes and or primates? And now, now, I believe he's not talking about the colloquial definition of ape. He's talking about the classification. Any um, member of the right. taxonomic superfamily hominoidia. Yeah, well, I was literally going to say that. Yeah. Uh, do you think we fit the definition of, of a, an ape or a primate? No. Really? We've yeah, already been a primate either. Be surprised by that. Come on now. Well, it's just funny because these words have definitions. I was talking to JD, not you. Oftentimes when I'm concurring with something, I'm referring to JD because you've said, as I said earlier, that you've said very little that's concurrable. And I haven't said anything that you can show to be false, period. All right, well, well all right, what, what is I'm your response to... Uh... Things that you say that, that you will stick to and not pretend that I put words in your mouth. So I'm still looking for the thing that you said did not exist. Already been okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. referee, referee, referee jumping in here. Referee, you. referee jumping in here. Aaron, what is your answer? Are, are we apes and or primates? Do we fit the there, classification? The definition uh, for the higher ranks, the, the higher uh, taxonomic ranks that he's talking about have very long criteria, and we fit all of them, all of the diagnostic criteria. So we're not just talking about similarities too. We're talking about what makes us one of. We have vast de uh, definitions for primate, for for uh, anthropoids slash simians, for for catarines, for hominoids, for hominids, hominines. All of these have de have long definitions, and we fit every criteria that he says that we are not is completely indefensible. Well, Art, I have a follow up question: um, Is it possible for us to fit these criteria and yet not have a common ancestor with other modern apes? Is that possible? Not if reality is real. Okay. okay. 
Um, Aaron, any thoughts? Or you want to move to the next question? Just move on. Okay. Yeah, four percent. He's running out of time. Uh, can Ar- Aaron, do you have a question? <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Is it? Can you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> I said, why is Ard yelling and what beer is that? I want some. Actually, that's my question. I want the beer. I'm going to go out there the and beer. get it. I have some Kentucky breakfast out here. I don't know if you get that down in Texas. Delicious stuff. The beer is a local brew you can't get to. It's called Full Grown Beast. And Ard, it's a- where are you? I'm in Dallas. Oh, okay. I need to go yeah. down there. That and Houston. It's it's five. It's 15.3 ABV. 15.3. Oh, see, now I, I got the same thing. I got a 120 minute down there in the cooler. I should bring one out. And All right, so, with us. Yeah, I'm not sharing a ten dollar <laughs> beer. Are you kidding me? All right. I want to say some one thing to this is gonna sound strange, but I don't think you're acting in bad faith either. I think you've been deceived, and I think I can help you. And this is not bullshit. I'm not saying this just to to sound like I'm holding a position or score points. I mean it. I think I can help you that you are conce- you are definitely deceived. There's no doubt about that. And I can prove it. And I want an opportunity to do that. Bring it. We should connect after the show. Um, what is it? Dreg and uh, JD can actually give you my contact information unless you find it yourself. Sure, sure. More than happy to speak with you privately, publicly, whatever. Okay. Right, so I think, we, I, think we do, I think we'll do one more question, and then I think we're going to wrap things up. Oh, and it went away. Darn it. <laughs> the question went away. <laughs> Dreg, no! All right. <laughs> it's back. Because it's the only question for Aaron. I want to get to that one. It's the only one Aaron gets. So, can Aaron provide evidence for non-creation and the scientific origin of life? But non, can I provide evidence for non-creation? Yeah, that's a weird phrase. Word, I believe he wants to know, can you, can you demonstrate wrong. that life originated naturally through chemical processes on the earlier? Earth? Yeah, it, it, this right. is an enormously complex project. So, I, I managed to find everything that, that's immediately relevant and compress it really, really solidly into a single paragraph. But it's a long fucking paragraph. Do you really want me to read it? It answers the question. Uh, no. What? No. no. Okay. I'll tell you what. Well, what, they'll be after the show. Obviously, there'll be comments it's on the thing. It's a paragraph of three hundred and forty-six words, but it does. Oh, you can, question. you can, you can, you can do that. Go for it. Three, that's not too much. What we know about the early Earth is that it uh, was much warmer and more radioactive than it is today. A bubbling cauldron cooking complex chemicals. Thanks to Yuri Miller and a number of other similar experiments, we know that water, ammonia, methane, and hydrogen generate amino acids when heated and charged with electricity. This is not the same thing as the volcano, the, the lightning in the uh, mud puddle thing. That's completely different. The same thing happens when you change the mix to include carbon dioxide, nitrogen, hydrogen, sulfide, and sulfur dioxide. Similarly, heating water to 70 degrees Celsius in the presence of iron hydroxide, stimulating geothermal vents in, or simulating geothermal vents in the anaerobic conditions of the prebiotic earth also produced amino acids and alpha hydroxy, alpha hydroxy acids in the lab. A separate study showed that redox and pH gradients drive amino acid, I, I just lost my place, drive amino acid synthesis in iron oxyhydroxide mineral systems. Oh, we should start from the beginning then. Yeah. <laughs> Aladine and valine too. Maybe. I don't even think I'm saying those right. Two of the proterogenic amino acids uh, thought to be among the first or the most abundant in the prebiotic earth can polymerize into peptides. Further studies show that it is remarkably easy for peptides to subsequently assemble into ordered protein-like two-dimensional structures, amyloids from basic building blocks. This discovery supports the researchers' hypothesis that primal life had evolved from amyloids such as these because peptides can spontaneously form self-replicating protein structures in the presence of carbonyl sulfide. They can also dry into polypeptides because some of these chemicals become increasingly complex after repeated cycles of inundation, dehydration, and irradiation. Then once the right phosphate is involved, they become ribonucleotides. If ribonucleotides come into contact with montmorillonite, they spontaneously produce strands of RNA. Activated RNA can not only replicate itself, even without the usual uh, enzyme, it also builds DNA. And biochemists have also now know of a ribosome that can either use either left or right-handed RNA templates to exclusively synthesize right-handed versions, solving the problem of homochirality. Then, of course, phospholipids automatically form a bilayered cell wall upon contact with water due to their combined polarity, allowing a haven for all these processes with transport vesicles. And other all right, you know, all right, that, that just sounds, that that sounds very, it. very complicated. I really just think God doing it with a miracle is a lot easier <laughs> hey, explanation. Aaron, send me that over Facebook or whatever because that sounds fascinating. Love yeah. that. Send yeah, me um, that somewhere. 
I recommend putting the entire thing in the comment section after the show is over, so I don't know people can read because that's actually very good. <laughs> I love. I that. just get so t- see that's that's not evolution. It's not even related to evolution because evolution is a process, and abiogenesis is like fourteen different processes, and they're not the mm. same process. All right, so, so um, we're, we're pretty much out of time because okay. Aaron has no battery life. Uh, DPR, would you like to to close things out for us? Well, I, 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 I very much, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm not used to not speaking. <laughs> That's why. <I'm laughs> um, uh, it's it's been very. Take some scotch, clear your throat. I, you know. I, I did note down a lot of questions that I would have liked to have asked, but um, hey. It's it's your show. Uh, if you want to close it down, uh, we can carry on a conversation after the show, uh, whatever you like. But uh, I hope everyone has enjoyed it. Um, I hope that uh, people will follow the uh, the channel and um, perhaps JD, you can tell people uh, when the next show is going to be. What's what's what you have in mind, if anything, uh, and whatever. Uh, and, and thank you for, for having me. Um, and for those that say, uh, or used to say that I should never, uh, I, I could never shut up. I think I've proved that for the, the last hour and a half, I've, I've been very, very quiet. Oh, well, see, uh, for those of you who don't know, if you look at his box, he was talking the whole time. He just couldn't figure out how to unmute. <laughs> He's, he's the tech savvy, not really DPR's thing. Anyway, uh, to the audience, thank you again for joining us. Um, the next episode is still being planned. We're hoping to possibly do it in maybe two-week intervals, unless something incredibly major comes up that might demand uh, an episode earlier than that. But, uh, yeah, uh, as my producer says, uh, possibly anti-vax versus doctor or maybe Second, second Amendment discussions. Or, like I, said, I mean, creationism could really fill the slot forever. Oh, we're not going to do that, though, so don't, don't worry. Um, uh, anything you guys want to say? Aaron, you want to say anything to as the last bit? No, no. I just I, I I like doing the audience questions. I think that those are, I think those are valuable. Probably more so, in a way more so than both of us. Like you know, doing like normal debate kind of things where you each present your case. I think the interaction is more important than each of us presenting our cases. And modulation, because I, I agree with some people in the comments, yes, I, I, I could stand to be mod, uh, moderated. So getting questions from the audience would be would be helpful. I think that's a good format to follow. Yeah, maybe next time yeah, we'll start, think, we'll start I, quite I, audience I think questions earlier. I think the division between the conversation between the two of you and the questions was um, very well done. Uh, I had a few questions of my own, but I didn't think it was appropriate for me to um, stick my oar in. Um, I, I, I was just uh, happy to be present during the discourse. Um, I'm glad he at least uh, admitted that his questions yeah. would have been inappropriate. <laughs> well, <laughs> again, uh, I, I want to say th- thank you, DPR, for coming. And honestly, you well, are... JD, just, yes? just, let me, sure, let me answer Aaron because he's he's always rude to me. Um, <laughs> the, there were some questions that um, I thought you did have that were good, but you didn't follow, follow up on them uh, sufficiently. Uh, and those are the ones that I wrote down um, that I would have asked him if he'd still been here. But uh, hey, it doesn't matter. It's not a problem. So one of us, I'm not sure which, didn't follow up on questions. You didn't. I didn't. Well, I did my best. I still yeah. have the answer to the thing he never he, he thought never existed. In our defense, I did cut him off a couple times because there were things where they were just kind of it went down to just accusation, 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 and, and no one now really had time to, to defend it. Really, I'm gonna have yeah. to go back and watch the video and wait for him to say the thing. And then, <laughs> uh, come on, watching yourself is like your favorite pastime. Come on, well, I mean, well, well, yeah. I mean. There were <laughs> Has he gone? I don't. I don't like speaking badly about people when they're they're not here and they're not able to defend themselves. I um, agree with that. That's a good principle. Um, but um, oh crap! There's a but. I mean, a number of things um, without even looking at what I've noted down. Um, he believes in 
a young earth but wouldn't tell us how young uh he believes in a god uh assumes it's a christian god but doesn't give an, a, any explanation about it um he dodges the question of um aaron's um propositions about uh fossils and the like um he uh, dodges questions about uh, the implausibility of the flood and the like. He takes um, note of uh, Genesis, um, <laughs> even though it's obviously stupidly wrong. Um, what else? Did, uh, oh, yeah. The, the, the <laughs> other thing I really being charitable. Was life. <laughs> life doesn't come from non-life yeah uh, i mean um do you want one you didn't do you want do you want a great one you didn't hear dpr i, I have a sorry? good one you didn't hear you, you want to hear a good I'm one sorry, from Aaron? I'm, I'm sorry did, oh yeah sorry there was one more that he did which was a classic kent hoban thing he um he confused the evolution of the planets with um, Darwinian evolution. Um, he was confused about abiogenesis. I mean, it, 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 there were nine or ten things I, I noted down um, that I, I think he didn't really respond to particularly well, but I, I, I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, do, you, do you want me to blow your mind with something you didn't hear? Go on. Aaron uh, does not believe God is omnipotent. Um, well, that was another thing that I was going to ask him. I don't um, know if you want to ask him because that I, I've mentioned. never heard a Christian say that before. But when in conversations outside the show, he has explained how he comes into uh, disagree with other creationists, other Christians, because um, he for he actually takes this for himself. He believes God is not omnipotent; that God is not all powerful. Well, if you read that 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 confrontation between uh, God and Abraham over over uh, over Salem um, the, yeah God can't be all that witty really I mean <laughs> not if he can be bartered down that easily you're muted well, of, of course I do love talking without without actually having the mic on I, I believe that's why Aaron uh, believes that because he kind of took he took some of the passages that make it seem like like God can't remember things and he went you know what God, God cannot be all powerful even then. when he cheats yeah stuff like that <laughs> anyway DPR you want you want to have the last word before we, we head out uh it, it's it's been wonderful I thought you did it very well um I I, I anticipated that it was going to be um desperately disappointing whenever you get a young earth creationist you know, you just know that the arguments that they're going to use are going to be terrible um he apparently um used arguments from answers in genesis uh which come on for goodness sake if you're gonna if you have to steep that low um yeah he also this, said that this, the people this, who... it's not much lower than you can go he also argued that genesis uh was accurate which is of course ridiculous he argued that uh noah's flood was um true and accurate he argued that um the the genetic makeup um of which Aaron is pretty much an expert on this uh, between us and other apes um, was non-existent um, he argued uh, in a very confused way that there was a time um, on the earth when there was no life uh, I and mean, ev everything that he argued was what you would expect from a young earth creationist all terrible. right. Well, yeah, just, all right. just simply terrible. Yeah, but what did there, there, was so questions that I wish that I had. there was a couple of questions that I wanted to ask too. I mean, but I have no idea what what he would have thought would have been an answer. I mean, he said that he he decided that creationism was the best explanation, which mystifies me because creationism doesn't explain dick. <laughs> it just doesn't. There's no explanation at all. 
an evolution. I actually, I actually disagree a little bit. Well, actually, it's, it's. I agree and disagree. I think it explains everything. I, I think creationism at, at heart can explain any state of affairs, which is the problem. You, you need a model that explains one state of affairs. You need God a test. That, you. That's how God did it. Covers yeah. the it's like, well, you need a test that says that you know it's either this or that, and if you got one of them, it's wrong. And creationism the doesn't really is, do that. JT, if I may. Um, the problem with it is it is totally unfalsifiable and it is not exactly. supported in, in, in any way by any evidence that is um, that is falsifiable, right? Proffered, proffered by them. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's kind of, I'd say the same thing in a different way, really. Is that uh, if you genuinely want to think God poofed everything into existence, then it, it, you. you you really can't argue against these people. That's a good one from Barney. Um, Aaron, uh, is methodological naturalism a bias? No. It's okay, done with that. No. Eliminating <laughs> bias. It's a means of eliminating bias. Methodological naturalism means that you can't posit anything that we can't test. So you can believe in whatever biases you want, but we have to be able to test it to show that it's true. So you can't make up, well, maybe it was magic. Well, I'm sorry, we can't test magic. There's no way we can evidence magic. There's no way we can falsify it. So it, it, if, you, oh, I think if, we can. if it can't be indicated or vindicated, verified or falsified, then it, ha it offers exactly nothing. If we can't even say that we know this. We can't know anything. If you, can, you can't know it if you can't show it, right? So you, it's, it may be something you believe, you might fantasize about it, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't qualify as knowledge. So no demand yeah, that we have. Are, also are, and I, I think we can we can challenge people who say that they have uh, magical claims, um, and all we need to do is send them to James Randi. Um, <laughs> I do and, love that guy. Well, specific um, magical claims, yes, and the Bible does. The make last, of... the last <coughs> excuse me, the last time I interviewed him, I did actually ask him. I said, "Look, James, is there any magic trick?" that you've ever seen that you do not know how it's been done um and he said nope <laughs> I, mean, I know it all well that guy so, he, he used to go on penn and teller's uh, bullshit and see if he can fool them you know that randy and penn and teller are our best friends oh well then he's probably had these talks with them before <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I actually I actually disagree, Aaron, that uh, the supernatural can't be tested. It's just I, I, I can imagine I can imagine a universe. I can imagine a cosmos in which the supernatural was a thing that there were simply these beings or some kind of elements in that universe that could break physical laws. Uh, whatever there physical laws they could break them. Claims. There are specific yeah. claims you can disprove. Like we had this argument in the Quran a few days ago. I was arguing with a, an Islamic apologist. You know, it says that the, it, much like the Bible does, the Bible says the same thing. The, the Quran is just repeating the mistakes of the Bible here, where it says that the stars will fall down to the earth. Obviously, that can't be literally correct. And this guy's arguing for a literal interpretation. He wants the fall, the stars to fall down to the earth. And we try to explain to him why they can't fall. He said, but this is a miracle. God can do whatever he wants. And I mean, oh, no, God can't do this. <laughs> See, but if God did exist and it would do that, that would be compelling. I mean, there's always, of course, there's you know one of what Clark's laws that you know any sufficiently advanced uh, technology is indistinguishable from magic. But yeah, I can imagine us living in a. Think of all the fictional tales you've heard, like any kind of X Men type thing, any kind of fiction, like a Star Trek, a fictional universe where supernatural is just an everyday event. A uh, I can imagine such a thing existing where we go, oh well, of course it's supernatural. There's God is currently in my house and he, he's making wine from the water for the fun of it because he's just a dick that way. I really wanted water. So I can imagine scenarios. The thing is, is that we don't live in a cosmos like that. That's why we have mythological natural. Because if the supernatural, if there were physics breaking beings that were just, you know, were, were, were self evident, uh, we wouldn't have never, the methodological, would never, would never come, it would never come up. There'd be no need for that. We'd be like, oh, well, he's doing it. I'm watching the fairies in my garden. They're making the grass grow. They're, they're, they're right there, evidently. They're standing there. She's, she's shedding the dust, and the grass is growing. So it is the pixies. There they are. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think that wraps us up. Uh, so again, guys, thank you for showing up, and of course, uh, uh, future, future future episodes. Unless we're discussing something you have no interest in, you are always invited to come back. DPR, thank you again for entrusting me with the show. Um, I hope I do you proud. You did very well, thank you. And, and DPR, so, it's it's good to see you again. Sincerely. Yeah, same Absolutely. here. Absolutely, you too, Aaron. 
All right, so that will close us out from the audience. Thank you for showing up. Um, as uh, I believe our, our creator uh, mentioned, uh, we have a Twitter account and several other things. They're all listed in the outside chat, and I'm sure they'll be linked on um, some of the links that we presented to that, that brought you to this in the first place. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Aaron White, who, whose battery just uh, broke before he could uh, finish the show, thank you again for showing up. Um, I think you were as terrible as you could be, and it was appreciated. Um, you, you'll be, you too will be invited on at a later date. Uh, thank you all for watching, and good night. Thank you. Good night.